made in Italy. Yet, this label only defines a small part of me. It does not take into consideration all of the past actions, locations, circumstances that have made me what I am today. When I was younger, I had an obsession with clothes, irrespective of the label they would carry. I first moved to Switzerland for my master thesis at ETH Zurich in 2012. And this is me at that time. Being 25 years old and Italian, I brought along two huge suitcases full of clothes and accessories. Peter, a very kind uh, student from the laboratory I was being hosted, picked me up at the station. And I still remember the terror in his eyes when he first looked in the direction of me and then in the direction of my suitcases, and he frantically switched between the two. He was hoping desperately that they did not belong to me. But they did. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> As a student in Zurich, my scholarship could barely cover my monthly rent. Yet, at that time, those jeans and dresses seemed worth foregoing other luxuries like textbooks or writing paper. But six months later, I had to slow down with my obsessive shopping behavior if I wanted to be able to keep feeding myself. It was at that time that I started taking better care of the clothes that I already had. And after a few laundry-related failures where my odd sides crop top would better fit my baby cousin, I started paying more attention to the labels on the clothes. And that was when I first realized that a label says very little about the garment itself. It gives information about the present life of the garment, how to wash it, how to iron it. But what about its past? Where were all those beautiful and colorful fashion items produced? Through how many hands, machineries, locations had they gone through? Nothing but a vague made in. So I've started digging deeper into that to unravel the who, how, what and where behind the clothes I was wearing. And what I've learned is that the history of many clothes is far from being a happy romance. There are two main issues in fashion, as you might be aware of. The first are the human rights violations associated with garment manufacturing. I was 25 years old, and a 25 years old woman might have manufactured the T-shirt I was wearing while she struggled to survive under extremely low pay, poor working condition, excessive working hours. The second is that the fashion industry is one of the most polluting globally alongside with the oil and the livestock industry. I'm sure that many of you take care to close the water tap while brushing teeth to save water. It takes 7,500 liters of water to make a single pair of standard jeans. That's worth a lot of teeth brushing. I've learned the true cost of staying trendy. Complex, untraceable supply chains combined with our unsustainable shopping behavior are at the origin of these massive problems. And I'm sure that many of you have had a similar experience and have wanted to shift towards more sustainable fashion choices. But the problem with that is the big amount of conflicting information or even misinformation about who has made our clothes and how. You decide to buy a garment from a retailer that states that that product line is sustainable. And four weeks afterwards, you figure out in the news that that sustainability is not backed up by any real evidence. It might indeed be that they've sourced the cotton responsibly. But if you're not provided with sufficient information about the sustainable origin of the sustainable line, then you have to believe their words. And for a responsible consumer, that should not be enough. In the food industry, we have accepted transparency as a need. 
As food consumers, we are constantly concerned about the potential influence of what we eat on our health. Well, in fashion, someone else is affected too, an underpaid worker or producer. And if you take into account the environmental damage, we are all affected as well. So clothing should have the same level of scrutiny that the food sector has had for years. But to really understand, we need to look also at another perspective, the one of the people that make and sell our clothes. Let's take an example, organic cotton. Could you please raise your hand if you ever bought something made of organic cotton? Now, less than 1% of the global cotton production is organic. Yet in the store you find organic cotton almost in every corner. So how is that possible? Well, some of it is simply not organic. So let's imagine that I am a retailer in Switzerland. And I want to make sure that the cotton in your T-shirt is organic. Nowadays, I rely on third parties' paper certifications stating that the cotton has been produced according to certain social and environmental standards. And as a retailer, I'm very far in time and space from this very farm in India where the cotton has been originally sourced. The cotton in a T-shirt, on average, has traveled 15,000 kilometers from farm to store, passing through tens of hands, manufacturing facilities, locations, And while most of these hands might be perfectly responsible, let's imagine that just one decides to sell conventional cotton as organic to increase profits. Or that this happened. Organic cotton gets mixed with the conventional one somewhere between farm and retail. The organic origin of the cotton is easily lost. One solution to trace textiles that has been introduced recently are blockchains. A blockchain is a database that records transactions between uh, authorized users in a way that each user can verify them without the need for an intermediary. And this makes the transaction themselves secure and transparent. But what happened between those transactions? If cotton gets blended, as I've just shown you, there is no way for the blockchain to know. There is no way to prove that the data included in a blockchain transaction is authentic. The problem is that the flow of digital product information is detached by the flow of real-life product. And this makes such systems vulnerable to the fraud that I've just shown you. Only when transparency is established in the physical domain, it can be extended to the digital one. But what can we do then? How can we recouple the product information with the product themselves? What if we could turn products into carriers of the information about their own journey and origin? And this is what I've been working over the past seven years. First as a researcher during my PhD at uh, ETH Zurich. And then after completing my studies, I've invested all of my savings into Elixa, the company that I've co-founded to bring transparency into intricate supply chains. We spray markers containing product information onto textile fibers providing them with a traceable fingerprint from producer until retailer. The markers are based on DNA, nature's information storage system. We provide each product with a unique DNA identity, just like humans. A unique marker is applied on the raw cotton at the farm or at the ginning facility right afterwards and survives all of the cotton processing steps. Spinning, weaving, dyeing, finishing. At any point during garment production, 
manufacturers and brands can submit the product to a quick paternity test to unravel the history of the product and ultimately verify or disprove if it really is what is claimed to be. The amount of marker detected allows to determine if, for instance, organic cotton has been blended with conventional one. And because there is no limit to the number of different markers that we can provide, a unique marker can be applied at each step of the production to assign a unique identifier to each individual brand, producer, manufacturer, even lot number and product line. This allows not only to trace back the origin of the product, but the individual location it has gone through. This way, all of the actors in the supply chain can be sure of what they are buying and selling, and they can pass on this certainty to consumers who do not have to worry anymore about false product claim when they purchase. And the technology can be applied to virtually any supply chain or material, from clothes to diamond to agricultural products. By locking the product information to the material itself and providing highly granular supply chain data, we close current traceability gap and complement existing solutions. These are very interesting times to work on traceability. We are reaching an inflection point where transparency will no longer be a choice, but an imperative. What we buy, what we eat, what we wear are not just basic needs, but a form of self-expression, which is evolving into something more meaningful, a lifestyle, a choice to consume respecting the people and the natural resources involving the product life cycle. But how to accelerate this process, then? On the one hand, by educating consumers who are not aware of traceability issues yet. On the other hand, by convincing slow-moving brands that doing good for the planet is also good for the business. Perhaps a decade ago, we would have placed the responsibility for action only on governments. But in today's fast-moving fashion era, pioneering brands, non-profit organizations, movements have the power of doing it in a quicker and more direct way. The challenge is huge. 300 million outfits a day huge. But we need to start somewhere. And we need everyone on board, producers, manufacturers, brands, solutions that are both digital and physical, to turn the giant textile industry around. And you, you can do your part too. We as consumers can educate ourselves, we can educate others, and we can vote with our wallets. We must demand clothes that are genuinely transparent and labeling that goes beyond that made in Italy, in India or China. Thank you.